Hello and welcome back. In today's session, we will look at some scenario based interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, load balancer and auto scaling groups in uh, AWS. Now, these questions are mainly designed from your interview perspective. So, whether you're looking to prepare for your interview or you just want to enhance your uh, skills on load balancers and auto scaling groups, then you are in the right place. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question I have is, you have a website with sudden spikes in traffic. How would you configure an AWS load balancer to handle unpredictable loads? So for this, we will be uh, making use of your application load balancer. And with this, we will be uh, enabling your auto scaling as well. So your uh, ALB and auto scaling will be working together. So in your auto scaling, we will be setting up your uh, auto scaling policies as to when you want to scale up or scale down. So it could be based on your CPU utilization or based on the request count that you want to scale out your EC2 instances or scale down your uh, EC2 instances. Uh, and then uh, we will be configuring a health checks for your load balancers. That way, your load balancers will only send the traffic to your healthy instances. And if the instances are unhealthy, uh, the load balancers will not send the traffic to those instances. So we'll make use of your ALB and auto scaling groups for this. The next question we have is how would you route traffic across multiple AWS regions for a globally distributed application? So for this, we can either make use of AWS global accelerator service or we can make use of your Route 53. So under Route 53, we have this routing policy, which is a latency based routing policy. We can make use of this and uh, deploy our application behind an application load balancer in each of your regions. So uh, Route 53 will be your global service and uh, uh, we can uh, make use of any regions uh, in your Route 53. And this setup will help you to reduce the latency for uh, your users. And how it, is, uh, how it does this is by uh, routing the users to the nearest region and also provides you better fault tolerance if one region fails. The next question we have is a new feature rollout is expected to increase traffic for a specific part of your application. How would you adjust your ALB and auto scaling configurations to prepare? So for this, we can create a new target group with an auto scaling group and um, uh, we will be also be configuring an ALB to route the traffic based on the uh, URL path. So in the uh, load balancer, we can uh, go with the path-based uh, path routing. So this, uh, we can also increase the minimum number of instances in the auto scaling group and um, uh, we can monitor the performance metrics and then adjust the EC2 instances according. So basically increase the capacity to handle that additional traffic that you might be getting and uh, you can make use of a few other options that uh, can help you to handle that uh, increased traffic. The next question we have is how would you set up health checks for your ALB to avoid routing traffic to unhealthy instances? So your ALB uh, makes use of your target groups and these target groups uh, make use of your health checks to evaluate whether uh, the traffic can be routed to your instances or not. So uh, in your ALB configuration, we make use of your health checks, which is nothing but like a endpoint which can help us to test the functionality of your EC2 instances, you know, like, like let's say slash health. So if uh, you get a, a success response, then the instances will be marked as healthy. If not, the instances will be marked as unhealthy. So we can set up your health check criteria, like, you know, what is the response code you're expecting, your timeouts, and this will help you to determine the health of your EC2 instances. Um, and then if your instances are unhealthy, then ALB will automatically remove those unhealthy instances from rotation. So basically, ALB will not send the traffic to those unhealthy instances. Uh, ALB will send the traffic only to your healthy EC2 instances. Next question we have is you need to reduce response time for users in multiple regions. What setup would you use for your load balancers? So for this, we can deploy our application load balancer in multiple um, uh, regions and then make use of Route 53 with um, latency based routing. And this latency based routing will help us to send users to the closest region. So based on the regions that we have deployed, and this will help us to reduce the latency for our users 
and also provides a regional failover support. So if one region goes down, we would still have other regions which will um, allow the users to access the application. The next question we have is if your ALB encounters an HTTP 504 timeout error, what steps would you, would you take to troubleshoot this? So uh, first we will need to check if the uh, health checks are passing in the target group or not. So basically whether the instances are healthy or not, we will need to check that. Uh, next, we will need to um, uh, check the backend server response time. So how much time the backend server is taking and whether it is within the ALB's timeout configuration. So uh, you might, you can configure a timeout with your ALB and if your backend server is taking more time, then you will see 504 error. If needed, we can increase this timeout setting or optimize the backend server to reduce the processing time. Right, so that's how we can uh, try to fix that issue. Next question we have is describe how would you configure a load balancer to support both HTTP and HTTPS traffic with automatic redirection. So uh, for this, we will be creating two listeners in your uh, load balancer. One of the listener will be pointing to HTTP port 80 and the other uh, listener will be pointing to HTTPS port 443. Uh, so the HTTP listener will use a redirect action to send all the traffic to HTTPS and this will ensure that there is a secure communication. So even if the user is hitting the URL on HTTP, uh, your redirect action will redirect the HTTP request to HTTPS. That way you have a secure communication. So you will basically have two listeners for this. The next question we have is your application needs sticky sessions. How would you configure this on your ALB? So uh, sticky sessions can be used when you want to make sure that a request from a client is going to a particular server only. So the sticky sessions can be enabled at the target group level of your load balancer and you can also set, set an appropriate duration for the sticky sessions. Now, this will help uh, you to ensure that the request from a single customer is always going to the same instance and this will allow you to have your session persistence. So the example could be like let's say you are accessing the instance and uh, uh, for some reason your system uh, got shut down. Now when the system comes back up and when you're trying to access the application you want to continue from where you had left. So that's basically your uh, session stickiness. Uh, so uh, that way when I'm accessing the application it would hit the same server and continue from where I had left. So you can make use of this. The next question we have is how do you configure auto scaling groups to handle daily high traffic credit periods without manual intervention. So for this we can go with your scheduled scalings which will help you to scale up your its instances uh, based on your timings that you have set or based on your historical traffic patterns. All right? Alternatively you can also configure dynamic scaling policies based on your CPU utilization or based on your network utilization to adjust your DC2 instances automatically. So either you can schedule them like to for two hours or three hours to scale up the instances and then scale down or you can scale up based on the demand. So if the CPU utilization is more, if the load is more, then launch more instances, we can do that also. Next question we have is our application requires additional instances when memory usage hits 80%, how would you set this up in auto scaling? So uh, for this, we will make use of your CloudWatch metrics, which will help us to uh, monitor the memory usage. Now, by default, you don't get the memory usage. So that's why we make use of your uh, CloudWatch metrics. Uh, so we will basically create a custom CloudWatch metric, which will help us to monitor the uh, memory metric. And then we will set up an action for it, which is to uh, scale up your instances whenever the memory utilization exceeds 80%. All right, so basically you'll create an alarm, uh, a metric, and then that alarm will have an action for your auto scaling group to launch the instances whenever the memory utilization is at certain threshold. Next question we have is how would you ensure that an auto scaling group maintains a minimum number of healthy instances even during instance failures? So for this, we can set up a minimum uh, instance count in your auto scaling group configuration. And this will help us to maintain that minimum capacity. Like let's say at any point you want three instances, that's a minimum count. 
So your auto scaling rule will ensure that you always have your three instances running no matter what. You can also enable health checks so that unhealthy instances are automatically terminated and replaced with uh, new instances. Okay, so you can automate that, that process as well. The next question we have is describe how would you use auto scaling with a fleet of spot instances to save costs without compromising the availability. So for this, uh, we can make use of your mixed instances policy. So you can uh, have a mix of spot instances and on demand instances. Uh, so you can set up a higher weightage for your stop insta uh, spot instances in the launch configuration. And you can use this feature called capacity rebalance, which will help you to replace any uh, interrupted spot instances with available ones. So uh, we know that your spot instances does not guarantee the availability of your instances. And there are chances that your instances can get interrupted. And uh, if you want to replace those instances with new spot instances, so that's where we can make use of your capacity rebalance. The next question we have is how would you configure auto scaling to prevent excessive scaling during temporary traffic spikes? So for this, we can make use of your target uh, tracking scaling and we can make use of a cooldown period or we can make use of your step scaling to gradually increase your instances based on the severity of your metric thresholds. Now this will prevent you from add uh, from adding too many instances uh, even though it was not required so like for example let's say you had a spike for two minutes now you don't want to launch instances for that right you want to wait so either you can make use of your cooldown period where you will wait before you launch the instances or you can go with your step scaling and where you can set a threshold so if uh, your metric is within that threshold then it will launch new instances for us the next question we have is what steps would you take if your auto scaling group was scaling in and terminating instances too quickly leading to downtime so again this is where we make use of your cooldown period so we basically adjust that period to basically delay the scaling actions all right and this will give your ec2 instances more time to process the uh, request Additionally, we can make use of your target scaling, uh, target tracking scaling to achieve a more stable and predictable scaling process. The next question we have is your application has varying load levels in different regions. How do you configure auto scaling for this setup? So for this, we can separate, we can create two uh, or other separate auto scaling groups in each of your regions that you're working with and this is mainly to handle the specific loads independently so if you're let's say you're working in north virginia you'll have an auto scaling group there and if you're working in oregon you'll have an auto scaling group uh, in that region as well uh, and then we can make use of your aws global accelerator service or we can make use of your outreach to use latency based routing to distribute your traffic across um, uh, different regions and that brings us to the end of our scenario based interview questions for uh, AWS load balancer and auto scaling groups. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more content and uh, uh, please leave your comments in the uh, comment section below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.